Hi, it's Jen and Tammy back with a Wooly Mug Mat series, and we're now doing the June project already. already. <laughs> I can't even believe I just said the word <laughs> no. June. Oh, right. I this know. is fast. I hope you're enjoying this series. I know We've I'm. I'm loving. I mean, just look at these three projects. We started with March, mm -hmm. April, May, and June, and what we'll be doing for out the 12 months is. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to be doing applique on the one side and your amazing stitching on, fun the, stitching on the other side. Great fun. So if you are just jumping into the series for the very first time, you'll need to download two pages. Well, even if you've been doing the series, you'll need those two pages. <laughs> um, you'll be getting a tracing diagram as well as a layout diagram. Again, this is the Wooly Mug Map for June. Go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage at the bottom. There's a link, free downloads, and you'll be able to, to really get all of the downloads for all of this series, we've done other series, and there's so much there. There's, there's so many lot. downloads. There is. If you've not already subscribed, do that. Absolutely. We're always coming up with new projects that we want to share with you. you and of course, when you're subscribed, you get actually an email to let you know that we, there's a new video live. Um, we went into great detail, Tammy, in the very beginning. That was that a was long with video. The March one, and so that was yep. we originally did that in February. Yes. So we did. we're going to just very rapidly move through just reminding you the steps you'll need to do to get your applique down to the background and then I'm going to bring it over to you Tammy Perfect. because the new thing each month is your stitching. Correct. What I'm showing them over here is the same every time. So just a reminder download the two pages. If you like to use fusible applique for your wool and we do, we like this down to the background. I like it down. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we love to use heat and bond light. Mm -hmm. It has it's it's just seems to work well and the needle doesn't get stuck if you're going to be doesn't. doing this either by hand or by, or by machine. Right? So we Correct. like this product. Yep. You'll also need some freezer paper and we're using the Cut Right Heavy Duty freezer paper that you'll be using for your oval. And what I love about this, we talked about this before, is you can use it multiple times. Again and again. Yep. Yes. So for each project, you will be using your black wool and you'll be cutting out two of those with your oval. One is going to be for the front for your applique. And of course, you want to show them the back of that. You've yes. got all your stitching here. Yep. You want to be able to cover that up with another piece of black wool Correct. and kind of hide your stitching. And it yep. sandwiches them in there too. It does. So they also don't fray out. So um, go ahead and cut your oval out. Two of your, uh, out of your wool, black wool, you'll get two of those. And you'll be using the heat and bond light uh, to do the applique. That's where you'll be using the tracing diagram because these are reversed for fusible applique. Mm -hmm. If you do All not right, want again. to use a fusible applique product, you don't like maybe using fusible, you'll be using the layout diagram for your shapes. Correct. I love to use my applique pressing sheet and my light box to pre-assemble like my flowers, my um, beehive, and my bees and move everything to the background. Again, exactly. if that's new to you, go back to the beginning of our series, yep. which was the March project, where we show you how to use the light box, we show you how to use the applique pressing sheet, and move everything onto the background as units. Correct. So once that's done, Tammy, and we've moved everything onto the background, yep. take us to what we would do next. What you would do I next. I noticed a little okay. antenna, oh, all yeah. that detail. All the fun stitching What, what do we do next? Next, what I would do is we're gonna take the thread here. This is the Petite Cotton Thread by Sulky. It's a 12 weight, so it's a heavier cotton thread. And we are just going to whip stitch that down. We did ours by hand. If you don't like doing handwork, you are welcome to put this in your machine. This cotton thread is on a spool. This goes in your machine, not a problem. You're going to want to use a heavy duty needle though. I would recommend the size 100 super nonstick needles. Yep. These are really nice. I love those needles. So you can see our stitches on the back where we have done that. And then I would give this a good press. Okay. Make sure we're all heated up here. Make sure we're turned on yep. and heated up. Yep. And I, think I so. would definitely use steam when you're doing this. Beautiful. In the beginning when Tammy was using steam with wool, I'm like, what are, what you, are doing? you doing? And you know, she's taught me that. I don't need to be worried about nope. that. Not and at it all. Really seats everything just perfectly. It and does. the wool pressing mat seems oh, to not flatten stuff this. down. It doesn't. All my applique is still raised up. Yeah. It just didn't smash it flat like it would on a normal ironing board. Right. Okay. So after we have that, we need to mark our oval. So when I mark this area right here, yep, I have a couple of things I use. I like this white Mark Begone pen. 
this works really nice on wool. It does. Really, even cotton. Even on cotton, this works, yeah. It's hard to find a marking tool to mark on dark fabrics. It is. You can find uh, lots of products to mark on light fabrics. Many, many. But, Friction pens yeah. are great. But, but dark fabrics? Dark fabrics. Very limited. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a shabby ruler. And we like our stitches to kind of begin and end at the same mm -hmm. point. So I'm going to mark that beginning and end point with this white marker just so I know about where I'm gonna start and stop. Because sometimes I just get to stitching and I'm like, whoa, I went way too okay. far, right? And then I have to rip it out. I don't like to rip out stitches. No, I like to put them in. And leave them there, right? <laughs> exactly. All right, so I have my beginning start and stop here. I'm gonna take my oval that I used to cut out my background. It's already in the shape that I need it. So I am just going to set this on here and just begin marking this. And I came in a little bit deeper on this mat than I did on the others. The other mats I think I was about a half an inch in. Mm -hmm. I think this one I'm probably even deeper than that, four to five eighths of an inch because of the flowers. Why, I see how it goes out like see how they not bounce quite out a half an inch out but to the edge. we're getting there. They are bouncing out there. All right, so you can see, we'll let that dry a little bit. So you can easily see your white lines. I love that. I noticed how when you first draw the line, it doesn't appear immediately. You don't see it. So That's just right. a little bit, just, just like a second or two later, mm -hmm. it appears. Let it dry a little bit. That ink has to dry and it comes right visible. I love that. And then that. if we misdraw the line, I know we get this question sometimes. We do. I know there are permanent marking pens. What is your preferred way to get rid of those lines? Steam. Oh, I like steam. Okay. Just do the bottom one though. Don't take my top ones off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to redo them. <laughs> steam or just a damp cloth, yes, correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. You can iron them away just like that. I'll let Fantastic. you take that back. Fantastic. Okay. Like and that. I like that. Okay. Sometimes I use a micron time. pen on permanent. Oh, and then it's there forever. It's there forever. That's you better right. love it. <laughs> Microns are there forever. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about stitching. Uh, all of our stitches are found in our book. This book is the Embroidery Crazy and Quilt Tool. We also have the stitches listed on our download so that you don't have to remember what I'm saying. You can just look at your download and they're listed with the page number right there for you so that you can easily flip to the pages. Uh, this combination of stitches is actually a combination of several simple stitches that I found in the very back of this book that I'll reference you to, and I just kind of did a little differently. Uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, That's the Tammy way. I know. I have to but just kind of shake it up a it little. It looks complicated to me. It does, because there's so much going on. Okay, exactly. so I know you're going to break it All down right. and show gonna us gonna that break it's this not down. hard, though. That's right. Okay. So I'm going to start with the green thread. And this is a razzle thread, and it tends to be a little bit squirrely. So I like to use the thread magic on this. Okay. All right. So we're actually just going to put this in here. Does this mean I'll be the boss of my thread, Tammy? Yes, this is <laughs> you're going to be the boss. Have you watched any of our <laughs> series right. of videos? Tammy likes to Always be the boss, the boss of the thread. Of the thread. <laughs> this is really important to me. I know. I get to boss something around, right? <laughs> I'm going to boss around my thread. I'm going to use a shabby embellishing needle. We got these from Primitive Gatherings. These are amazing needles. Yes. I also have the chenille needles that we use to do the hand stitching of the cotton thread. Oh, that's the whip nice. stitch. Yes, to do the whip okay. stitch. Yes. Okay. This is a clover embroidery needle threader, and it has a wire, uh, what would you call this, Jen? Kind of opening. An opening, okay. And this is going to go right easily into the eye of the needle. Okay. And we are just going to stick our thread right down in there, like that, and just pull it right back through. There that's we go. Boy, we've been using it, we've been using the same threader for I don't know how many videos, and, and it just it holds doesn't break, up. does no. it? I, I mean, I'm not being gentle no, with it either. She's not. I know. Okay, so we are ready to go. So we are going to start stitching with a chain stitch. All right. So to begin a chain stitch, we have our needle threaded. We have a knot in our thread, of course. And I am going to 
bring my thread up right at the very beginning of this line, right here. All right, and I'm gonna make my thread go to my right. And I'm gonna put my needle back in where the thread came out and dive forward about a quarter of an inch, about like that. And I'm gonna wrap my thread from the right to the left. Did you know, Jen, that if you wrap your thread from the left to the right, that it's gonna make a different type of stitch? It's gonna look really? differently. Why? Yes. Show it's me. because you're wrapping it differently. It's okay. just the stitches look different. So you can wrap your thread from right to left or left to right, but do mm, it consistently. Don't mix. Okay. Right. Don't mix because it will look different. And your chain stitch will not have an even look. All right, so I'm just going to put about five little stitches in here. And if these stitches try to misbehave, don't worry about it. You will fix them in a second. <laughs> we'll just keep stitching here. There we go. See how we pull that and they That's all just pretty. kind of fall into line, right? Yeah, they do. Even though you think right now, you're like, wow, that is a hot mess. It's not. It's all good. There we go. Just like, like how that. even your stitches are. I see that's important for it is important. just the uniform look of the... Right. I love the chain stitch. I think it's probably one of my favorite stitches to do is the chain stitch. It does not take long, though, to do your stitches. So if I was at the very end, down here at the end, to finish this stitch, you just simply take it to the back, right on the other side of your loop, just like this, to finish that stitch, just like that. Okay? Nice. Nice. All right, so now let's grab a blue thread. I have blue already threaded on a needle here. And I'm going to show you how to do this little flower. So I counted my stitches, and I'm going to count two stitches in and start. And when I start on this flower, we're going to bring our needle to the front, just like this. And again, my thread's going to go to the right because I want my stitches to all look the same. So I pay attention to that. Back in, we're going to do a lazy daisy stitch. And I'm going to come up a little bit deeper than it than a quarter of an inch because I want that stitch to be a little bit longer because it's in the center, mm. right? You want the center petal to be a little bit taller than your others. And then dip it down to tie that off, just like that. So now I want to come up back in my center. And we are going to come up, down and up. And I'm just going to split the difference between these two. We're going to loop our thread around right to left. Wow, I see why it's important to do the center petal first. So you know where yeah. your other petals even go. Right. Because they're not going to be even if you don't do it like that. Right. Okay, so now we'll turn this around a little bit. Look at that. And the variegated thread is starting to show. Oh, I love variegated thread. You never know what color you're going to get. Right. This petal is going <laughs> to be a little bit darker than the others. It makes it look like you've used several different threads, yes. and you haven't. It. It's all the same thread. I just love that. Isn't that great? Look how beautiful that is. And I believe that the variegation um, is random. Is that right? On this, on one? this one, I believe it is. Which okay. is really nice. It's, it, it you is. You don't know what you're going to get. That's right. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that cool? So now I also think that every flower needs a yellow center. So now I'm going to do a French knot. And to start a French knot, I'm just going to come up right in the middle, just like this. And now I'm going to wrap my thread three times around and go right back down, right next to there. You need to hold this thread tight, and I'm just going to slide that. See that pretty little knot right there? So now I need to hold on to that thread as you're pulling that French knot through. If you let that go, those little loops are just going to go crazy. Yeah, I made, <laughs> I made a mess. Yeah, do, they do. They that. just go nuts. 
Oh my there we gosh. go. And we just set it in right it's here at beautiful. the bottom. Now I would just continue making flowers. If my chain stitch was in there, I'd just continue making my flowers back and forth, back and forth. Once again, Tammy, you have it's not fun. You know, if you if if I showed that to someone, they'd be like, oh uh, no, I, I can't do that. I know. And thank you again for just those yes, are thanks. actually basic stitches. They are when They're in very combination. Basic. They're present just beautiful. And then the variegation. Now, I know there's one thing I do want to clarify. We've been getting questions on this. Okay. About the embroidery thread. That's right. First, this is to clarify, this is applique thread. Applique. For stitching everything down Correct. to the background. And we can use this on a machine. Yes. This can go on a machine. Yes. We this normally do all of our embroidery with that, but we did use this one just to do the, the yeah, bumblebee in the end. We that. did. Yeah, we did. Some people have been asking, can I put these in my machine? That's no. Okay. No. So I wanted, They're going to break. All They're right. They're just not going to go through your machine at all. All right. I wanted to get that one out there and get okay. the official answer. The official answer. So I'm sure you're already working okay. on the July one, if oh, I, I know am you. Too. Oh, yes. I all am. All right. So we love to hear from you. We'd love to get some feedback. Tammy and I love to bring these projects to you, but we really do it for you. And we love it when you engage with us and leave, just join the conversation. Absolutely. So we Absolutely. will see you for the Wooly Mug Mat for July. Before you know it, we'll be exactly. see you then. Thank you.